The GTX 1660 launched almost four years ago and with its six gigabytes of VRAM and touring architecture, how does it hold up in 2023? You might be surprised by what we find. Find out after this message from our sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that makes cooking easy, fun, convenient, and most importantly, healthy. Take it from Bessie, a mother of three who has had over a hundred HelloFresh boxes, who says that HelloFresh takes away the two things I hate most about cooking, planning and shopping. They deliver crisp ingredients and follow along recipes delivered to your door every week, allowing you to choose from a vast selection of meals and catering to a wide range of preferences and requirements. Two of the many great dishes they offer include cheese pesto and tomato scrolls with cheddar cheese and Herbie chicken Waldorf style salad with crotons and lime alola feta. Mmm, yummy. Succulent. And right now, I'm offering you a great deal on your first box of HelloFresh with a 65% discount on your purchase, as well as free shipping. So what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on this opportunity to get an epic discount. Click the link in the video description below to start enjoying healthy and delicious meals today. Now on to gaming performance. We tested the 1660 in 10 popular games, all at maximum settings, with TAA where possible. While at 1080p, since you probably won't be gaming at 1440p, and definitely not at 4K with this card. Starting us off in F122, the 1660 pulls slightly above 100 FPS, beating the 1650 Super by 13%, while falling short of the 3060 by 40% with acceptable 1.1% lows. It's a pretty okay start for the 1660, but it gets its ass handed to it by the 3060, even though it's still pretty acceptable. On to Hitman 3, where the 1660 gets around 88 FPS on average, handily beating the 1650 Super by again around 13%, while losing to the 3060 by 37%. Moving to something a lot more intensive now, Cyberpunk 2077, where the 1660 manages to get around 30 FPS, all the while having consistent 1.1% lows, beating the super in average frames by 25%, while losing to the 3060 by 39%. Moving over to a recent title now, Spider-Man Remastered, we see an acceptable above 60 FPS experience, beating the super in average frames by 21%, while losing to the 3060 by 39%. Ignoring any lows here, as they seem to vary across the board, on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we again see acceptable experience here, getting 75 FPS on average, or 22% more than the Super, while losing to the 3060 by 36%. In Red Dead 2, we see some pretty weird behaviour going on with the 1660, with it performing not that much worse than the 3060, only losing to it by 6%, but still beating the 1650 Super by 36%. We can just ignore this one, as not only is there much of a difference, but the 1.1% frame seems to vary like what we saw in Spider-Man. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, the 1660 gets around 30 FPS on average, with pretty decent lows once again, only beating the 1650 Super by 3%, while losing to the 3060 by 55%. I'm not sure what happened here for the 1660, especially considering the impressive gains we saw earlier versus the 1650 Super. Onto a much older title, Grand Theft Auto 5, the 1660 manages around 72 FPS, ignoring the lows once again, but only beating the 1650 Super by 3%, and losing to the 3060 by 26%. Again, we are seeing the point of diminishing returns for this card, most likely because we are becoming more CPU bound. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, the 1660 loses to the Super by 2%. However, this is most likely the margin of error, as the 1 and 0.1% lows are high on the 1660, and versus the 3060, the 1660 loses by 37%. On to our last title we tested today, CSGO. The 1660 gets well over 300 FPS, or 10% more than the 1650 Super, while losing to the 3060 by 29%. To sum Summarize all 10 games we tested today, the 1660 achieved an average FPS of 102, which is about 13% higher than the 1650 Super. However, it unsurprisingly fell short of the 3060, losing by 33%. In terms of FPS per dollar, the 1660 provides 33% more value than the Super, while maintaining the same value as the 3060. It's important to note that this only shows how many frames you get on average for the current market price of these cards at 1080p, without considering any feature set advantage or other factors. You can also compare the performance seen in our average FPS charts to the current price of these cards you find online. Now moving on to the average power consumption, the 1660 consumed about 11% more power than the 1650 Super, while drawing 36% less power than the 3060. This brings us to performance per watt while gaming, and surprisingly, the 1660 is the most efficient among all the three cards, being 2% more efficient than the Super, and 7% more efficient than the 3060. Overall, these are pretty good results, as the 1660 offers good value
value and is comparable to the 3060 at 1080p. However, it's important to remember that this only shows performance per dollar in the 10 games we tested and doesn't account for other factors like ray tracing or performance at different resolutions. Moving on to some benchmarks, now starting us off in 3D Mark Time Spy, the 1660 gets 14% more score than the 1650 Super, which lines up well with the game of performance we observed. When compared to the 3060, it falls behind by 39%, which again aligns almost perfectly with what we saw in rasterization. Now onto more productivity focused benchmarks, such as the PG Bench Adobe Suite. Starting with Premiere Pro, the 1660 doesn't perform significantly better than the Super, only being around one point higher than it, while losing by 17% to the 3060. This goes to show that the GPU can have a profound impact on video editing performance. In After Effects, the results we saw earlier with the 1650 Super and 1660 remain the same, with the 1660 only pulling ahead of the Super by 5%. Compared to the 3060, it falls behind by 37%. Lastly, in Photoshop, the 1660 outperforms the Super by 6%, while losing to the 3060 by only 2%. However, in Photoshop, the score seems to vary widely in our testing, so make it that what you will. To summarize the Puget Adobe scores, on average, the 1660 beats the Super by 5%, while losing to the 3060 by 16%. Moving on to our performance per dollar charts, we can see that the 1660 turns out to be the better buy out of these three cards, beating the Super by 22%, and the 3060 by another 22%. Now let's talk about the average power consumption of these cards. The 1660 draws about the same amount of power as the 1650 Super, while consuming 28% less power than the 3060. This brings us to our final summary today, the average performance per watt for these cards. Once again, the 1660 proves to be the most efficient option, beating the 1650 Super by a mere 1%, but handily beating the 3060 in performance per watt by 16%. Overall, the 1660 performs decently across the board, also being more efficient than the 1650 Super and 3060, all the while providing better value. Value. Compared to the 1650 Super, however, the difference is relatively minor. For overclocking, we were able to boost the core clock by 210 MHz and the memory clock by 900 MHz in MSI Afterburner, all the while bumping the power limit to 110%. This translated to 14% increase in average frames in Heaven Benchmark, while the load stayed virtually the same. The power draw increased by 16% and the GPU core temperature rose by 12%. Finally, the fan noise levels also increased by 12%. To conclude, the GTX 1660 continues to provide a decent gaming experience at 1080p without breaking the bank. Additionally, it delivers acceptable performance and productivity as well. Although it falls short of the 3060, nevertheless, it provides more value in many cases. Again, remember that value results we obtained are only its average performance in these games and benchmarks versus the current price listed online. Be sure to calculate its value if the price of any of these cards changes, as they inevitably will. But overall, it's still a viable option if you can find it. For a budget conscious gamers looking for a decent 1080p gaming experience without breaking the bank. Anyway, that's all for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to check out some of our other GPU videos like the 7900 XT review we did.